Aloha, I'm Tony, Planetarium Supervisor at Bishop Museum. Today we're going to take a look at the couple of planets in our solar system, specifically the rocky inner planets. The four innermost planets of the solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are all made of rocks, as opposed to the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, which are made of gases, not rock. The most striking thing about our planet is how blue it is. When spacecraft have looked at Earth from elsewhere in the solar system, it appears as a pale blue dot. This is due in large part to the oceans. And while water makes up some 70% of the surface of the Earth, when you consider the whole of the planet, the vast majority is rock, both solid at the surface and liquid further down. The presence of water on the surface and in our atmosphere has allowed for life to develop. Earth is still the only place we know of to have living organisms. Next, we'll move out a bit to our rocky neighbor, the moon. Earth only has the one, so in English, we just call it the moon. It's called Mahina in Olelo, Hawaii. What other names for the moon do you know? Throughout human history, the moon has governed daily life, including here in Hawaii, where changes in the moon's phases informed Hawaiians when it was a good time to fish and plant. The moon takes just under a month to orbit Earth one time, around 28 days. It turns at the exact same rate as it orbits, so the same part is always facing the Earth. As its position changes around Earth, the sunlight reflects off at different angles, and we see the changing phases. It is thanks to the moon that we have tides in the oceans, and without its gravity, a day on Earth would be closer to 10 hours than 24. The moon is thought to have formed from a collision between Earth and something about the size of Mars. The material blasted off the early Earth continued to orbit around and eventually formed into a large sphere. Over time, the moon has been bludgeoned with meteors, giving it a crater-covered surface. With a pair of binoculars, you can make out a surprising amount of detail on the surface, including the craters. Viewing the moon through binoculars or a telescope is best done when less than half the moon is illuminated, so the detailed features aren't washed out by the light. We'll fly in closer to the sun now, to the closest planet to the sun, Mercury. What does Mercury look like to you? Because it is gray and covered with craters, many people say it resembles our moon. Just like our moon, Mercury does not hold an atmosphere. Its gravity is too weak, and it's too close to the sun. Without an atmosphere to protect it, any bit of rock that comes near it will impact and often leave a crater behind. On Earth, our atmosphere helps distribute heat around the planet more evenly. Without an atmosphere, Mercury is 800 degrees Fahrenheit on the sunlit side and minus 300 on the dark side a temperature swing of 1,100 degrees. Despite all this, NASA's Messenger spacecraft discovered water ice in the craters on Mercury's North Pole. The craters are deep enough that sunlight never reaches the bottom, so it stays cold all the time. Because of its closeness to the sun, Mercury orbits faster than any other planet, taking only 88 days to go around one time. For comparison, remember that Earth takes 365 days. Our next stop will be the second planet from the Sun, Venus. In some ways, it's almost a cross between Mercury and Earth. Venus and Earth are about the same size, both have an atmosphere, and both have volcanoes. That's about where the similarities end, though. Similar to Mercury, Venus is insanely hot, but unlike Mercury, the high temperature is not limited to the sunlit side. Venus's atmosphere is much thicker than Earth's and is made almost entirely of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. This means that while it lets heat from the sun in, when that heat tries to escape, it gets trapped by the atmosphere, keeping the temperature around 900 degrees Fahrenheit all the time. That's hot enough to melt lead. If the high temperature isn't enough, it rains sulfuric acid, and the atmospheric pressure is about 90 times that of Earth, resulting in surface pressure equivalent to 3,000 feet below the ocean. Just think about the pressure you feel in your ears as you dive even a few feet below the surface. Venus is so inhospitable that even the few robots that have been sent there haven't lasted more than a few hours on the surface. No wonder it's sometimes called Earth's evil twin. Our final stop on today's tour is the red planet, Mars. Viewed from Earth, Mars appears as a pale reddish-orange. As we see close up, the whole surface of Mars is that red-orange color. This is because the atmosphere of Mars is made of carbon dioxide, and the surface rocks are made of a lot of iron. Carbon dioxide changes the color of iron in a process called oxidation. 
The same process changes the appearance of anything with a lot of iron left in the rain too long here on Earth. A more common word is rust. Mars is a fascinating planet to study. There is lots of evidence on the surface that liquid water was once abundant, leading scientists to speculate that some form of life may have been possible here in the past. Contrary to Hollywood, though, any evidence for Martian life is likely to be microscopic, single-celled organisms like bacteria. The dominating feature of Mars is the largest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons. At 72,000 feet tall, it's about twice as high as Mauna Kea, which is about 33,000 feet measured from seafloor to summit. Olympus Mons covers 120,000 square miles, wide enough to cover the state of New Mexico. Compare that to the size of the Big Island, which covers about 4,000 square miles. Olympus Mons is a shield volcano, just like our volcanoes here in Hawaii. Shield volcanoes form when lava erupts slowly and flows a long way before solidifying, giving them long, gradual slopes. Mars is also home to the largest canyon in the solar system, Valles Marineris. It's about 6 miles deep and 2,500 miles long, about the distance from Honolulu to Los Angeles. You'll notice that unlike Mercury and the Moon, Mars does not have craters covering its whole surface. This indicates that relatively recent volcanic activity in some areas has covered any impact craters that had formed in the past, while in other areas the craters are preserved. Mars also has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Unlike our spherical moon, Mars's moons are irregular shaped, resembling lumpy potatoes. They are thought to be captured asteroids. Now as we zoom out and look down on our solar system, we can begin to get a sense of scale. Then we remember that our sun is just one of a hundred billion stars in our galaxy. And our galaxy is one of a hundred billion in the universe. It's a pretty big place. We look forward to having you back at Bishop Museum, but until then, be sure to follow us on social media and keep an eye on the Online Learning Center. Mahalo for your support, and don't forget to look up.